This is Eric Bertram with Apex CCTV. Today, I'm going to be going over some basics on dynamic DNS service, including what it is, how to set it up, and how it is commonly used with surveillance installations. DNS stands for Domain Name System and is used to resolve a specific name into an IP address, similar to the way you might use the Yellow Pages to find a phone number and address for a specific business. This is how you're able to type in www.google.com and pull up Google's homepage on your computer. As an example, if I open a command, a command prompt and ping geodemo.apexcctv.com, which is our Geovision demo DVR, that, that name will resolve into the IP address 192.168.1.20. And I can actually open up our Geovision demo either by the IP address, like this, which is what most of my clients wind up doing for their surveillance installations, or because I do have a friendly name configured, I can open it up this way by typing in geodemo.apexcctv.com and of course I get the exact same page on the same server and I can log in either way and view my cameras, I can switch them, uh, I can move around, I can do you know whatever I want to, anything that this particular DVR would allow me to do under normal circumstances. Let's say that my client's IP address is 74.7.157.161, I believe that's my current IP address. And I can find out by going to whatismyip.com from just about any computer and it'll tell me what my public IP address is on this machine. Uh, but regardless, uh, I set up all their cameras, um, I set up their digital video recorder, deal with any port forwarding, networking that needs to be configured, and they're able to go to and open up a web browser from home or anywhere else and view their cameras by typing in this IP address, 74.7.157.161, into their browser's address bar. So I've got them all set up, they're happy, everything works perfectly for a while, but for whatever reason their internet service provider changes their IP address. So now when they type in 74.7.157.161 into a browser's address bar, they get a page not found error because the address is no longer valid. So this is where dynamic DNS comes into play. Dynamic DNS services will host a friendly name for their digital video recorder or cameras so that when they use that friendly name in their address bar, they can get to their cameras just like they might with www.google.com. The benefit here is that when their IP address changes, the dynamic DNS service tracks the change very quickly and apexdemo.dyndns.org will always resolve to the same address. Now there are a lot of dynamic DNS services available. Uh, lots of them offer a basic free service and I've been using dyndns.org for about 10 years now without any problems, so I'll use them as an example. So here I am at dyndns.com. Uh, once again, this is a service I've been using for quite a long time. I recommend them highly. And they do, of course, provide a free dy dynamic DNS service. I can just scroll down the page under services, click on free dynamic DNS, and, and start this process. And there is a quick overview here. I'm not going to go over it for the purpose of saving time. We're going to go on up here and pick dyndns.org, just which is their standard domain name. So that means that whatever I put here is going to become my uh, is going to become my domain name that's going to be dynamic. So I'm going to put Apex Demo uh, just as a quick kind of test. .dynes.org. So when I type this into a browser, this is going to come up uh, with our DVR. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and and host it with an IP address, which is the standard way of going about it. And it's already detected my IP address, so I'm going to put this in here and allow it to use that one. Uh, I don't need any mail routing, so this is just going to be a simple host. I got to create this, and so now this is this is essentially finished. It's very simple. So um, if I go to uh, to a web address again or a, a command line again and ping that address, I believe it should already be resolving, and it is. So just immediately like that, uh, I can now use this name and browse to my DVR. So I'll skip showing you that for now because we'll see it at the end. Uh, the important thing I have to do now is to set up a dynamic DNS client. Now some, some DVRs, like the Geovision DVR, have a client built in. Uh, I believe Aver Media has a client built in. Most of our Vivitech cameras have a client built in. That does have to be configured. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, in order to get to DynDNS.com's free client, which I highly recommend, you can click on uh, 
9dns.com up here to go back to their home page and then click on support and right up here is a 9dns updater for windows um, I use this one because it will automatically post an update and these free accounts expire after 30 days uh, if there's no update to the IP address so this one will will do it about every week or every 10 days or so regardless of whether it's changed or not and keep your free account from expiring on you so if you have an IP address that changes a lot doing it on the DVR is fine uh, I prefer to just install this piece of software on the DVR itself if it's a Windows based DVR or on any other computer on the network is fine uh, as long as they're behind the same router so I've already downloaded this to save a little time let's go check here it is on my desktop we'll go ahead and double click this and run it and this is just a pretty standard Windows installation uh, of course you want to read all this stuff when you're going through it but I'm going to just burn through it real fast to, to uh, get this going there is a couple of important details of course we want this to start with Windows so that it's always running uh, I usually tell it not to show a tray icon, but I'll leave that in place now so you guys can see it. Ultimately, we want this to run as a Windows service, so that it runs in the background and and uh, doesn't interrupt the user at all. And that is its default configuration. So we'll click Next here and check this checkbox. Uh, and again, what this what this essentially does is is prevent the software from running you know as a as a Windows application like Outlook or like any other so that at the end of the day the user hopefully doesn't even really know that this software is on their system it's not interrupting them it does it's not a resource hog it's not uh, something you should be concerned about really slowing down a computer I've used it over and over and over I know people are concerned about that with miscellaneous applications uh, I can assure you this one doesn't have that problem so we'll click next uh, I'm going to use a default installation location and go ahead and let it run. Uh, install itself, as you can see, it just finishes in a blink. And I'll go ahead and run this updater. And I'm just about finished with this. All I have to do is put in my username and password uh, for the 9dns.com website. And this is essentially finished. It is going to log in, found my current IP address, found the, you know, it sets the status of the updater, shows us that it's on. It shows my username, shows the last time that we updated, and it shows any host names that I have registered for this account. So I'm going to check this one and click apply. And now that now it's showing me that this is uh, has has updated and has returned good. And of course, it shows the last update is today and the current time. So if I click OK, this is finished. Uh, also, if I come over here to advance, there's some other things we can look at now that we're installed. Start it with Windows, display the updater icon, uh, automatically synchronize, uh, show a system notification when updates occur, and automatically check for, check for 9DNS software upgrades. There's a couple of these I usually turn off for resource, uh, you know, resource reasons. This automatic update, this, uh, this updater icon, again, I don't really want it down here most of the time. I don't need to use this often. It's very much a set it and forget it kind of application but for, again for this default demonstration we'll show the basics so let's go look at at a, at a machine that's off my network so we can actually see uh, how this works again if I go here to a command prompt and ping uh, ping apexdemo.dyndns.org it should come up with the IP address that we said earlier uh, or if I go to Internet Explorer and put this into a web server or a web browser's address bar Uh, once again we should get my DVR and of course we do so now I'm outside the network and this WS2 here is one of our web servers it's at a completely different physical location uh, I can log in here as a guest and uh, please feel free to go check this out on your own you can go to apexdemo.dyndns.org uh, I'll leave this configured the frame rate is not going to be very high on your video because again I am doing this uh, from off-site so that you can see it's coming back in like if I were at home or at a hotel um, but regardless uh, this is in effect going to work at all times uh, no matter what my IP address becomes it doesn't matter how many times it changes or how often it changes this name apexdemo.dyndns.org will now always resolve and take me to uh, my DVR